starting to really respect Delia's art. I really should have worn gloves throughout this entire project. It did take a little bit of artistry to get the ugliness that they are. Hi everybody! Welcome to the final video of 2021 here on Bentley House Minis. Obviously not the final video over Beetlejuice, just the last one for the year. Before we get started, I just want to make sure and say thank you for 2021. Lots of exciting things happened during that year for my channel specifically, such as getting to take the Addams Family dollhouse to a museum and also passing 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for being a part of all of that. But back to the project I'm doing for today, I am going to be wrapping up one of the final things I need to make for the dining room. This part of the room needs to have Delia's sculptures. If you're not quite sure what I'm talking about... Are you doing this to me? This is my art and it is dangerous! You think I want to die like this? In the movie, these sculptures sit behind Delia in the dining room space, and so I've left a little alcove here specifically for those. However, I did not leave myself enough space. This is one of those things that's going to happen when I'm translating a movie which has large sound stages into something like a dollhouse which has limited space. So I might have a couple in different areas of the house. When I was thinking about where else the sculptures could be, I got an idea. What if I took the opportunity of me messing up the size of the alcove and turned that into an opportunity to create something interesting within the dollhouse? The movie Beetlejuice is full of movement and color and atmosphere and sound, and I think it would be really cool if my dollhouse was full of those things as well. So I want to try and make one of the sculptures move. I just came up with this idea, I didn't have time to order anything, so I'm going to be trying to do my best with what I already have in my home, but hopefully if you want to try something like this as well, you might have some of these things too. So let's go ahead and get started on those sculptures. Again, I'm going to take this piece, thankfully it's removable, so all I have to do is have this on my desk and I will know whether or not they fit. Because many of Delia's sculptures look top heavy, I'm going to be using two different kinds of clay. I'm going to be using polymer clay for the bottom part of the sculptures and paper clay for the top where it needs to be a little bit lighter. For my polymer clay, I didn't have enough of one color, so I decided to mix several together. I'm going for a dark grayish, even though in the end I will be painting over it. I'm also using some different gauges of wire, and one of the main ones I'm using is some Christmas ornament hooks that I've got from the Dollar Tree. If you've seen my review video over Arteza Polymer Clay, you will know that I have found it to be incredibly strong. So when I want something to be strong, like these sculptures, especially since I'm wanting one to move, I am mixing the Arteza Clay in, and that will make my Sculpey 3 clay a bit stronger. I tried to pick a contrasting color from the color wheel just to help it become a little less bright. Again, I'm going to be painting it in the end, but if I can get a base color that doesn't take too many coats, that is pretty helpful. I used a pasta roller machine for this process because even though Arteza clay is very strong, it can be a little difficult to knead. Once I have everything put together, it's not completely mixed but that's okay, I'm going to be cutting out chunks and I need three rectangular trunks for three of the sculptures. And this one is going to be standing vertically, that's the base of the flower, and then I need two more, and I'm just kind of estimating off of my reference photos on how big they need to be. Again, they don't need to be perfect, uh, that's the very definition of Delia's artwork, is not perfect, so I think, you know, anything I get that will be close to my reference will be okay. Before I get too far along, I wanted to test the bases of the sculptures inside the space to see how many it seemed like I could fit. 
I'm making this final sculpture in its transform state where it's moved and turned into a creature that looks like it's going to walk around. So I'm doing the base of this sculpture out of polymer clay and the rectangular base that I would have made out of polymer clay will be done in paper clay so it's a little bit lighter on top. I'm hoping by doing it this way I won't have any sculptures that fall over and they will look like they're defying gravity a little bit as they do in the movie. I'm leaving the head off of this piece as I said it will be added with paper clay but I am adding a piece that looks like the start of the neck so it will be easier to attach the head later on. I'm using some foil to roll it onto the surface of the polymer clay. This is going to give it a more stone effect. The sculptures in the movie look very bumpy and as though they're carved from stone, though I'm not really sure they are. They may be more clay. During one of the scenes, the movers throw one of her sculptures on a table and they look a little bit more light than they would be if they were done out of stone. However, that is what their texture looks like. I rolled up some aluminum foil to put it underneath my walking creature. This is going to help me start to get the correct shape for when I bake him. In one of the references, it looks like he has some kind of spine that mimics a lizard or dinosaur spine. So I'm adding that onto the back and then slowly smoothing it into the lower part of the body. I think this is why I'm really excited to make this one move because he does really look like a creature that needs to move around the room. After I get everything smoothed together, I need to make sure and texture this piece as well so it looks like it's all made from the same material. Before baking, I'm going to add a loop from these Christmas hook wire. This is going to just allow me to easier add the paper clay head on in the future. It'll have something to hold on to and I won't have to worry about the neck easily breaking. So I just stuff this into the top of the clay and once it bakes, it will be held in place. This is some armature wire that I had from a while ago. It's fairly easy to bend, but I felt like it was the right thickness for the main part of a couple of the statues. The one that's leaning off to the side and has like a ball at the top looks like it has two main legs. So I'm going to be making those out of this armature wire. And then I'm using a small ball of clay at the top to make sure that they stay together. I'm not making the full sized ball that goes at the top. I am going to be making that out of paper clay down the road. So it is a little bit lighter. For the flower looking sculpture, I'm just going to be adding the stem coming out and that's all I'm going to be doing before I bake. And finally, I'm going to be adding one of the other sculptures that moves in the movie. This one I'm not going to try to make move, but it does have quite a unique look where it has a rectangular base on one side and then it has a rounded piece on the other end. And I made that out of polymer clay as well because it's not held up in the air, so it's free to be as heavy as it likes. And here is all the clay I had left over from what I mixed. My son came in at one point and he was looking at the little sculptures and he was asking me what the name of these pieces were. I said they didn't have a name. So he came up with names for them. This one is Sad Flower. This one is Falled Over Potato. This one is Creepy Hammerhead with Legs. And I think this one was just Wee! Kids are fun. So from now on, I'm going to be using these names as I refer to the sculptures. To work on the rest of the sad flower sculpture, I'm using an old plastic bead. I'm using a paper punch that has a leaf shape, a stick of just wood that I had in my collection. And I initially thought I was going to use some wire, but later on I changed my mind and use thread. To start, I'm using some hot glue to temporarily hold this plastic bead onto the end of the stick. Later on, I will make sure it is held on there permanently with tacky glue, but I have to do this with the leaf shapes and it's going to be easier to do this while it's being held by hot glue while it dries. I was lucky enough to have this bead that already had a flower look to it, so I didn't have to sculpt that part but I do have to make the leaves that kind of form around this center part of the flower. 
I'm gluing them on to the side first and then once those have taken hold I'm going to add some more glue on the inside of the leaves and then push them around the bead. This is what's going to permanently hold this bead onto the stick. The hot glue I wouldn't trust to hold up for a long time. It's just there to do a temporary hold. Once I'm happy with the amount of leaves that I've added, I can go ahead and cut the stick down to the correct length. And this is what I'm going to attach to the stem I previously put in the clay. I used hot glue to temporarily hold it in place, and then I tried to use wire at this part, but the hot glue was too fragile, the wire was too hard to bend, so I abandoned that idea, and this is where I went to grab the thread. I pre-wrapped each section that I wanted to glue with thread. This was going to help my tacky glue take hold faster. And then as I held the pieces in place, I took a little of the extra thread and wrapped it around. And now I'm going to let that dry completely. As you can see, it has a pretty strong hold. Now I need to add some very strange wispy bits at the back of the stem. These you can see in the movie. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be. But in order to add these, I am putting the flower on my one, two, three blocks and I'm holding it down with some masking tape and I'm making sure that gravity is going to help me on this one. So in the direction that I need the strings to go, that is what's going to be held down by gravity. I am coating the strings with some glue and then wrapping them around the pole. And once it's dry, I can pull it off of the one, two, three blocks, take my scissors and trim them down to what I think is the correct size. Now that the sad flower is complete, we can move on to whee! For this one, I probably should have added a few more wires before I baked it, but it's not a problem because I have a hand drill that's about the same width as the wire I want to add, and so I just drilled into the polymer clay, added glue, and stuck the wire in place. There are an additional two wires that come out of the middle back of the ball, and in order to add these, I decided to bend one of the Christmas hooks in half, add some thread to it, and then use glue to go around the ball. This is all going to be covered up by paper clay later on, so I'm not too worried about how ugly this looks. After the glue starts to take hold, in order to keep the wires sticking out straight like I want them to be, I'm going to take just a dab of hot glue and that's going to sit right underneath the wires. That's going to hold them in the position I want. And then once the paper clay goes around and hardens, they will be in that position forever. Then it was time to add paper clay on top of the polymer clay. This is a slow process of adding glue and then adding some paper clay on top. I'm also working with some fairly dried out paper clay, but I'm just going slowly and using water to smooth it out and then adding a sculpting tool to add dents to give it that rock-like texture that you can see in the reference. And that's it for we. <laughs> now we're working on falled over potato. This one, even though it's fairly simple, ended up being a little bit more complicated. For some reason, this clump of chaos has a very distinctive look. This sculpture has one single wire coming out of, um, I guess maybe its forehead? And that wire swoops up over its rounded form. I also ended up having the armature wire that I put in come loose, so I'm adding a little bit of masking tape, which gives me a little bit of gluing area, and I put just glue everywhere on this one. <laughs> Anywhere a wire was going into polymer clay, I made sure to add extra glue. On the back side, or the left side, or the right side, I'm not quite sure, um, there are a few wires coming out. Again, this is a complicated clump at this point. I added two wires and then added some masking tape around that because at one point it's a thicker grouping and then it kind of partitions out into some thinner, wispier pieces. So that's what I tried to create here on this interesting piece. Now interrupt this regularly scheduled Beetlejuice video for mail. <laughs> this literally just came through the front door and I can't wait to open it. So we're gonna open it together. It's from YouTube. I know we did a stream where I celebrated with you all and said thank you, but I wanna make sure to say thank you again because 
obviously this would not be possible without you all being here. And it's been so exciting to see the miniature community grow and how much fun we're having just sharing our art with each other, our art and our ideas with each other in the comments and on other platforms. So thank you for that. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want your experience to be exceptional. This award was inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. Thank you, Rick. Here's the letter. I'm sure it's the same letter that many people receive, uh, but I'm still going to read it. So here we go. Do you remember your first subscriber, your 100th, your 1000th subscriber? Chances are you do. And we know that you will definitely remember your 100,000th subscriber. It's hard to say, 100,000th. <laughs> your fans may have found you while searching YouTube, learned about you through a friend, or maybe you showed up as a recommended video. No matter how they came to find your channel, fans stayed and their numbers increased because of your unique voice and the excitement of being part of the growing community that you established. We are thrilled to see the development of your community and are proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. We know that you have many more stories to share with your community. Yes, lots of stories. <laughs> and we know that your fans can't wait for you to engage and amaze them even more with your commitment and creativity. So keep creating, keep building, and we can't wait to see what you'll do next. And we're here to support you along the way. And who knows? When you reach your millionth subscriber, we may just write you and ask, do you remember your 100,000th subscriber? Yours sincerely, Susan Wojcicki. All right. <laughs> and here it is. I, honestly, that is not the letter I have heard other people read. So obviously they change their letter every now and then. That was a really sweet letter. I'm a little scared to take it out of the packaging here. I don't want to get fingerprints all over it. <laughs> Presented to Bentley House Minis for passing 100,000 subscribers. Okay, so I'm going to have to redo everything in my background. So that'll be a video that comes up in the future. I need to make room for some other stuff as well. So, yay! <laughs> Put it in here so I don't get glue all over it. Now back to the video. On to the complicated one, the creepy hammerhead with legs. So this is going to take a little bit more effort on my part to make sure that it moves and wobbles and looks like something interesting. My son generously let me choose a car. He approved it. He made sure that the car I pulled out was one that he didn't care about anymore. And it was funny because he was actually pretty excited to see me destroy a car and turn it into something for one of my projects. He kept running back in to see if I had done it yet. But this is the one I chose and he was okay with me busting it up. And it's perfect, it's the right size, except for the fact that it's one of those, if you pull it back, it winds up. And I really just need freely moving wheels. So I knew I had to take the top off of this car just to help it fit underneath my, my sculpture creation. But I also needed to get to the mechanism inside to try and take apart whatever was making the wheels wind up in the back. I think Delia would be proud of all the dangers I'm about to face to make this sculpture work. I tried it first the easy way of just messing with some of the pieces to see if I could pull out a piece and everything would fall apart and that didn't quite work. So I donned my Kevlar gloves and decided I was going to have to drill out the little cogs and wheels that are on the inside of this very simple dollar store car. Let me tell you, this thing was very resilient, uh, but if I could drill out the interior or the axle on the inside, then I would be able to at least disarm this little mechanism. I eventually popped the entire white part of this car off, which is not good because it does have the back wheels embedded in it, but there was a way to easily snap it back into place. And before I did that, I was able to take out the interior parts and now I have extra pieces for something in the future. Now I have a pretty easy rolling sculpture. It fits underneath, it's pretty well hidden. 
However, I want to make it look like the legs move. There's no movement to the legs. It's very stiff. So I'm going to use a cutoff wheel to cut the legs off and then reattach them so that they dangle. Be sure to wear goggles when you're using a cutoff wheel. That's what happened to my last one. They do like to go flying. Again, I'm wearing my Kevlar gloves for this. My fingers are well out of the way, but just to be sure, I'm making sure to protect my hands because I am working on a very small piece. I slowly started cutting through the polymer clay. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just going to crumble. It was very strong and I think part of that is because I added that Arteza clay in the beginning and it cut off pretty cleanly. For each leg I made sure to do the very last part with an X-Acto blade just to make sure that none of my legs went flying so I didn't lose any. If you're wondering why I didn't just sculpt the body and the legs separately, I feel like doing it this way, it's much more organic and the pieces match each other a lot better. Oh yeah, and wear a mask because this stuff went everywhere if you do try to cut through polymer clay. But I feel like the legs and the body match much more because they were sculpted together and then cut apart. If I had tried to do these separately, I don't think it would look as cohesive. So now that I have all the legs separated, I can go ahead and try to reattach them in a whole new way. To do this, I needed to drill through the body four different times because I'm going to have four pairs of legs that are going to be attached to each other on either side. I'm trying to drill through as best I can. I had to kind of figure out where each leg came out because it wasn't the most symmetrical thing, but it ended up working out. And before I attached the legs, I sanded down the edges because there was a little bit of roughness due to the Dremel that I used. I sanded those down because I didn't want them to rub against each other. I wanted them to, the legs to kind of dangle as free as they could. I did the same thing on the body. So I had a smooth surface on both the leg and the body when they were reconnected. I'm adding some coffee stir straws in the holes. This is going to cut down on any friction that may be inside the hole from the drill piece and the drilled out clay. I cut these down on either side just to make them shorter, but later on I do take a craft knife and cut them even closer to the side of the body. To attach the legs, I'm going to be using just a single toothpick, and that is what's going to turn inside of the holes I created and help the legs dangle down. This means I also need to drill into the legs themselves, and in order to do this, because this is such an asymmetrical piece, I'm having to take each leg, figure out where it goes and where it needs to hit the hole that's going through the body, and then I'm using a white gel pen to mark it so I know where to drill. Because the legs are much smaller and the Dremel could easily just go through these polymer clay legs and make just a mess, I decided to hand drill each one of these so it's a lot slower and I have a lot more control. After I've drilled a small hole, I'm making sure that the toothpick fits in and then I can test it on the body. Once I know that it fits, I can take a pencil and I can mark the other side. And at this point, I'm just kind of estimating that that will work with the other leg. I made sure to do several dry fits before I completely committed by adding glue. So as you can see, these two fit pretty closely to the body. And I did color the edges of the toothpicks with black Sharpie, so it didn't stick out as much if you did end up seeing it. To attach them, I'm using some Gorilla Super Glue and some Tacky Glue because they pretty much take an immediate hold. I added the Tacky Glue on the end of the toothpick and the Super Glue in the hole of the leg. Then I could thread the toothpick through and attach the leg and just kind of hold it there and make sure it's at the right angle. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to take another toothpick or the extra part of a toothpick and remove the excess glue because I don't want to accidentally glue the leg to the body. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and just really focus on not getting any glue in that gap because that would pretty much ruin the whole effect. It ended up working pretty well and I did get quite a few dangly legs after following these steps. So I was happy with the process. Let me know if you would have done it a different way or if you have any other ideas. Of course, I'm always open to learning new things, but this was my pretty simple idea of how to get these legs to move. 
Now I think it's about time to give this poor guy a head, or actually this is the base of the sculpture when it's standing up straight before the transformation. Either way, I'm going to be making this out of aluminum foil and paper clay. As much aluminum foil as I can add will keep the weight down and that will help keep my sculpture balanced. So I'm adding quite a bit at the top and then I'm going to be using my paper clay over it. And if you try this, it may seem pretty heavy at first, but the water does evaporate out of it as it's drying, so it does lighten up a bit. This was a bit tricky because I was trying to sculpt a rectangular or cube shape on top of a rounded bit of foil, but I used a sculpting tool kind of as a rolling pin to roll along each edge until I was happy with the result. And then to match its previously baked body, I used some more aluminum foil to make some of the similar marks in the surface of the clay. While that's drying, I went ahead and decided to add a little bit of paper clay to the car that's going to go underneath. This is going to create a wider gluing surface for the bottom of my sculpture. To do this, I'm just going to press my sculpture on top while the clay is still wet, and that way I know that it will fit once I go to glue it. Now I'm going to take both of these and let them dry completely before moving on to the next step. Which of course, is painting. My favorite step. <laughs> it really brings things to life. I'm going to be doing a base coat on all of the pieces. I've tried to mix a darkish bluish gray, kind of how my clay ended up, but of course it does end up a little bit darker, but I'm not too concerned about it. Right now I just want to get everything a similar dark base coat before I add the final top coat. I'm also going to be painting any part of the car that is white, so that would be the edges of the wheels or the paper clay. And then at this point, I decided I wanted to make the wheels wobbly so it looked like the sculpture wobbled back and forth. To do this, I'm going to be adding little bits of thread onto either side of the car so that when that wheel turns, it kind of bumps and causes the wheels to wobble back and forth. I just added the thread on with a little bit of tacky glue and let that dry, and then I could paint over it with the same color, and they were pretty much hidden from view. After I felt like I had done all the modifications to the little car body that I could, it was time to glue it finally to the sculpture. This was kind of the moment of truth to see if this all worked. I do feel like I should have glued the car a little bit more towards the front because it does end up being a little top heavy when you get to the head, uh, but I also don't know if that adds more character because it kind of bobs up and down when it moves. You'll have to let me know what you think when you see it moving at the end of this video. But it, you know, it's all in an experiment, and as you can see, the legs kind of wobble as it goes. I think the wobbling wheels worked really well, so at this moment, I'm pretty happy with it. To create the final top coat of paint, I want it to be really gritty and look like a concrete texture, so I'm adding some PVA glue, paint, and sand to create this texture that I'm wanting. I'm also adding some of that base coat that I just put all over the sculptures to darken it up a little bit because I felt like the gray was just a little bit too light. Once I get everything mixed in, I have this dark gray, bumpy, concrete looking mixture. And this is going to go all over every single piece. All of them look like they're pretty much made out of the same material. They really remind me of chunks of building that get pulled out of a demolition site where they're just bits of concrete with rebar sticking out. That's what they remind me of, and so that's kind of what I was going for when I created this finish. In some of the references, the sculptures had this kind of green hue on them. So to mimic this, I'm using some green chalk pastel that I shaved down into this little paint pot. This is an effect that's really hard to do with paint, but chalk pastel does it really, really well. It's just a very light dusting, and it, it's like a highlight, a highlight of green. And I think it just adds a little bit to these very dull uh, gray sculptures. They have this little hint of green, and it really makes you look at them, which is maybe why you see that in so many of the reference pictures. 
but I do think it just adds a little bit of something. But that's what Delia sculptures will do to you. You just can't quite put your finger on how you feel or what you're looking at when you see her art. So here are the finished sculptures. Before finishing up this video, I did want to test out my idea for the movement of this sculpture. This is not going to be the final design. I just wanted to see if my idea would work. So what I want to do is a pulley system that eventually I would add a motor to that would essentially pull the sculpture across the floor and then it would pull it backwards. So I'm going to try and create a track that's just wide enough for the wheels. The benefit of this is that the wheels will kind of be hidden in the floor and it really will look like the legs are just gently brushing the surface of the floor. I'm using some foam board here to try and simulate this. If this does work, I will have to create a tiny track in the floor of my dollhouse. I knew that the thread that I was going to use would probably rub on the foam board, so I'm using a paper clip just to create this little M shape and in that center part is where the thread is going to go through and hopefully there won't be as much friction as if it was rubbing against the foam board. So I made two little prongs so I could just stick it into the foam board on the end and then use hot glue to glue it in place. This worked pretty well and yeah, so maybe I'll use something like that in my dollhouse. It'll have to be small and hidden. There are two poles that are on the little car body, one at the front and one at the back, and this is where I'm going to attach my string. The one at the back is pretty much covered with paper clay except for a small area. So that one is going to be tied on permanently, and then I'm going to loop the thread underneath the floor, come up on the other side where it has another one of those paper clip pieces, and then I am going to try and keep it as taut as possible as I create a small loop that's going to loop across the pole that's at the very front of the sculpture car base. I don't have a motor right now, so I'm just using my hand to pull the string back and forth, but eventually I would love to have that motorized. As you can see, it's not moving very well in the curved track. It does a little bit better in the less curved. So I'm thinking about just having a straight track. I did a quick demonstration on the back side of it going straight and it does work pretty well. So I made a straight track just to test this theory and I do like how it looks. As you can see, it is a little bit top heavy so it does kind of bob and weave as it moves. But I do think this is very indicative of the claymation type animation that was done in the movie, so it might add to the effect. I thought about adding these little bumps on one side because the two legs on either side are connected. If I had hidden bumps along the track, they would kind of bump up and move the legs, and maybe on the other side it would look like the legs were moving and you wouldn't see the bumps as much. It worked kind of okay on going forward, but on going back it got very stuck. And so that's something I can kind of look into in the future. This could just be because this is a handmade model and there's just, I, I don't know. But it was a good try. I do think the legs move enough on their own with all the little bumps and jolts that it looks like they're moving and I probably don't need the little extra bits on the side. But this was a good experiment. Again, if you have any ideas or suggestions, or if you know anything about small motors that could pull it back and forth, I would love to know in the comments. I am open to learning. I did look up MagnaRail. I do think that system is too small for this gigantic sculpture, but I'm very open to looking into other ideas to make this work. In the end, I really only think I can get two sculptures in the alcove just because, yeah, three bases fit, but once I added the tops, they really ended up filling up the space. So I might add the flower in the corner or it may end up somewhere else in the house. Of course, I have to backlight the blue window to see how it looks, but I am super happy with the results. Also, you may note from the movie that these sculptures sit in some sand. 
I decided not to do the sand in this episode just because I'm not quite sure which sculptures I want in there yet and they will probably be permanent once I put them in. So I'm saving that for later on. But for now, I think these sculptures are going to add a lot of character to this project and I'm so excited that they are finished. In the next Beetlejuice video, I plan to do a lot more building. I would really love to see the rest of the front of the house. That will be a lot of work, but I do think it will really start to bring a lot of things together and help me understand how much space I actually have in the living room and if I even have room for a moving sculpture. Just a quick note, I do have three houses that have come in that I do want to show, but I'm waiting to see if a few more come in, so at the latest they will be shown in the next Beetlejuice video. I'm so excited to share those, so stay tuned for that. So that's all for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. This is my last video for the year, so I will see you in 2022. Is that the right year? Yes. This is 2021. Yes. 2022. The years have completely melted together. And apparently my brain has melted too because I completely walked off camera and forgot to say bye. Bye. Okay, but seriously, I really should have worn gloves throughout this entire project. I have so many little cuts on my fingers from creating these sculptures. And I have to be honest, I'm starting to really respect Delia's art. I know in the movie it's supposed to be kind of making fun of her a little bit. Uh, and it's supposed to be kind of ugly. But, um... It did take a little bit of artistry to get the ugliness that they are. <laughs>